All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to how do we save a particular store to the Fire Store database. So you're looking at the add page, and you can see on the add page we have a text field where people can write the name of the store. This can be Walmart, this can be HEB Fiesta. And we also have another text form field where they can go ahead and write the store address. I'm using the form with a text form field because it comes with a validator. But right now, we don't have any view model behind this particular view to capture the values and to actually perform the addition of a particular store meaning saving the store. So we don't have that part done yet. So let's go back to our view models and we're gonna go ahead and add a new file and we will call it add store view model dot dart. Now this particular view model is going to be representing this whole screen, everything that happens on this screen. So let's go ahead and start with the name. Add store view model, that's easy, okay. So what exactly is going on on that screen on the right hand side? We need to capture a couple of different things, right? We need to capture the name of the store and we need to capture the address of the store. So let's go ahead and call this store name and we will initialize it with empty and store address. You can also call it name and address. That is perfectly fine too. There we go. Okay, and now we need some sort of a way to store, meaning save these values. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a function and I will call that function save store. So let's go ahead and start with save store. Okay, so inside this function, first of all, we are going to take these values. We're going to take the store name, we're going to take the store address and use it to construct a store model. So store equals to store auto import. And now I can pass in the store name and the store address. And the reason that we are doing that is that our Firebase layer or our Fire Store layer is going to be working with the model. And the reason for that is that store can contain some business logic if we want to. Okay, so we have the store object and we need to save it to Firebase. So I'm gonna go ahead and use something called Firebase Fire Store and it had already imported it on the top, you can see right here. Dot collection. So which collection are we going to save our stores. Well, I'm going to call it stores dot add. But if you see over here in the add function, we need to pass in a map, meaning a dictionary with a string as a key and the value is dynamic, meaning it can be string, it can be object, it can be boolean or float or, you know, double or anything like that. But we have to pass in a map. We don't have a map meaning we don't have a dictionary. So one of the ways you can do that is something like this. What do we want to save? The name and the value is coming from store.name. And what do we want to save? Address and the value is coming from store.address. And this is perfectly fine. I mean, you can definitely do that and it will work. But I think it will be much easier if we just make this a little bit more natural. So let's go to our store model, which is right here. And in our store model, how about if we create a helper function that will allow us to convert it to a map. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, it's gonna return us a map, which is string, and the value can be dynamic. And I'm gonna go ahead and say to map, nice, simple name. And over here, we can go ahead and return what we were returning over there. So meaning a name, and we can go ahead and say address. 
Perfect, right? This is much easier because now this is confined or it is part of the store model. And all we need to do is to call to map to convert that particular model into a map. Now let's go back to our at store and we can replace this whole thing with simply a call to store dot to map. Much nicer, much simpler, and much easier to maintain, I think. All right. So Firebase dot instance dot collection stores dot map. I think that's going to go ahead and save the, the database. I mean, save into the database. That's perfectly fine. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and call the save store. So where should we call the save store? Well, we have to go to the page that is responsible for creating this view. So let's go ahead and jump on to add store page. There we go. Well, one of the problem right now is that when we are writing something in the text field for the name and the address, it is not really being captured anywhere. I mean, nobody is getting populated. So that's the first thing we need to do is we need to populate those values somewhere. And that somewhere can be individual variables or that somewhere can be the view model. So we can automatically populate the store name and the store address. How do we do that? Let's go ahead and jump over here. I'm going to create the add store view model. I'm going to call this add store VM for view model. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to populate the values into the add store view model. All right. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing is that we need to initialize this. I mean, this is not going to work because you have to initialize it. So let's go ahead and initialize add store view model. So there we go. Our add store view model is initialized, but the values and everything is blank. The name is blank and the, you know, the address is blank. Everything is blank. So let's go ahead and make sure that they are not blank and we are populating it. Whenever we type something in the text field, the on change event of the text field gets fired. And it is over here that we can go ahead and write some code to populate our add store view model. So I can say over here add store view model dot store name equals to value. This means that every single time that we are going to type something in the store name, it is going to be populated into the store name property of add store view model. And we can use the same exact technique to populate the address also. So I can say add store view model dot store address equals to the value. Perfect. So this means that these things are populated correctly. The next thing is we're going to go ahead and check out the on pressed event. And you can see on the on pressed event is completely empty. So let's go ahead and call something over here. I'm going to go ahead and say save store. And I'm going to go ahead and pass in the context also. We will be using context. You'll see in a moment, but we're just going to pass in the context. So what are we doing in the save store? Well, we have to do a couple of different things. We have to first of all save the store. So whatever the name and address they provide, we need to save it into the Firestore database. And this is a modal, so we need to close out the modal also. All right. So let's go ahead and implement save store. There we go. Void save store. Actually, let's copy it. There we go. We're going to pass in the build context. And you'll see that why we are passing the build context in a moment. The first thing we need to do is we need to validate that the user has entered the store name and store address. And we can do that because we are using the form. And the form is using a form key, which is right here. So using the form key, we can validate. If the form key dot current state dot validate, meaning if it's validated, and it's going to return you Boolean, which is true or false, and it's also going to validate. So if I go ahead and run it right now, let me go ahead and just press the save button. You can see it is actually validating correctly because we haven't entered any store name. We haven't entered any store address. So what if we do enter the store name or the store address? So 
In that case, we can call add store view model dot save store. All right. And that's it. Let's go ahead and try it out and see if our store is being saved in the Firestore database or not. So I'm going to go to the store name over here and I'm just going to go ahead and say Walmart and some sort of an address. So I'm just going to make up some address over here. Let's just say Richmond Avenue in Houston, uh, Texas. Great. I'm going to go ahead and save. Okay. The first thing you will see is that, well, the model isn't closed. Okay, we are not even closing the model, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and go to our database and see if it's saved. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. And there we go. This is saved right over here. This is pretty cool, right? That it has saved correctly. Now, there are a couple of things obviously missing over here. The model didn't close. We need to close the model. And we need to find out that if it is 100% saved or not. And we're not really doing that. So if we go to our add store view model, we simply go ahead and save it. But at this point, we don't have any idea if it's actually saved or not. Because one of the things you have to realize is that when you call add, it is going to return you a future. So basically it is going to return a promise or a future, whatever you want to call it but we didn't really do anything with it, all right? So that is something that we need to make sure that we are doing. Basically, we need to make sure that if this is actually saved, then we give some sort of a future back telling that it is actually saved correctly or not. So let's go ahead and do that in the next lecture.